really feels like Kartik's in the air, sneaks up on you every year, doesn't it? But it's because we have the special plan of the great Acharyas that our schedule throughout the year has all these celebration points and we just get in the rhythm of it and we're bolstered at it at every step we had thinking back of course we had Janmashtami which was no small affair was it? It was small, right? <laughs> and then the next day we had, we had uh, Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja celebration. And then uh, I think Dirkul and I went away the weekend after that. And we were in Baltimore, Washington, D.C. But we came back and the next weekend we had the extended Vyasa Puja. That was a... Re a very uh, deep event, wasn't it? Yes. Then what did we do? And then we had Ranashtami. You see a pattern here? <laughs> uh, by the time you look up, you've gone through the whole cycle of life and uh, all you've done is chant, dance, and <laughs> distribute books, mostly, and uh, <laughs> maybe a little school here and there thrown in. Chant a lot of japa, and uh, it's it's well held together. There's no break at all in the in the schedule. As then coming up is Kartik. It's I think one of the most moving times of the year. Just remembering all the Kartiks, isn't it? I mean, I think back to to the early days when we had the Kartik time and just being a new devotee and the lighting of candles and offering to Krishna. Everyone gets a chance to offer a candle. That was memorable and very deep. And just the sights and sounds of Kartik and the, that everyone's giving their heart and soul during Kartik and then the Dhammadar Leela. And a few years ago, and I've mentioned this before, but I, I really like talking about it. They asked me, at Vrindavan at the first day of Kartik to give a talk about what it, what it is and where it comes from. So I had to figure that out. And I read, among other things, the Kartik Mahatmya. And after reading the whole Kartik Mahatmya, I came out with one thing, offer a lamp. <laughs> it's really the main thing. And I was just thinking how Bhakti is so simple and sweet. You offer a lamp during that time and sing the Dhammadar Leela. Just the, seeing the lamps at night, wherever you are, at whatever temple, and everyone coming together, offering a lamp. And then the, the haunting raga of the Dhammadar Ashtakam and singing together during that month is, it just carries you away. And of course, during that time, there's Diwali, which is celebrated, especially in India, if you're there for Kartik. And this year coming up, we also have, of course, we'll be having a program at Govardhan Hill. Everyone's invited. We'll be out at, we'll be at the Govardhan Retreat Center for the first few days. We'll do Parikram around Vrindavan. And then we'll just stay there at the Govardhan Ashram, at the Bhaktivedanta Ashram at Govardhan Hill. And we'll have, we'll be reading the whole third canto together during that time. Yeah. Krishna willing. Nirkul and I figured it out the other day. With Prabhupada's disappearance day and Govardhan Puja, which we usually only get half a day on those days, it'll be about a mere 70 pages a day. It's really not much, so it leaves a lot of leaves time for discussion and things like that. Then in uh, December, 
we have the Youth Yatra. We're going first to the GEV. And then we're going to Calcutta to see all the places where Prabhupada was born. The, not all the places he was born. The place he was born <laughs> and the place he gave birth to the, where his spiritual master gave birth to his, his lifetime service at the Ultadunga Junction Road. We found during our visits there with the last youth yatra that it was the best of, of all the places we went. Everyone came away with a very deep feeling of connection to Prabhupada. We liked it so much. Besides Calcutta, I've always loved Calcutta. It's my favorite city. And uh, then we're going to go to Mayapur, if I'm not incorrect. And we'll have maybe five, six days in Mayapur. So we have a nice program at Mayapur. It's really crowded for Mangalarti. So for the youth yatra, we have our own space and we have our own Mangalartiks and Guru Puja and class. And then we go out on buses around Mayapur, Navadip, and go to various places. And for instance, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Samadhi, Bhajan Kutir, and we have Kirtan there, and we go to many places. And along the way, we distribute books, which is really nice because it's a Sankirtan Yatra. And everyone gets a chance to distribute books in the Dom, which is a good training because if you want a place where everyone takes a book, that's your place. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to come back from there and go to, we'll have a Yatra, which was just recently put together in f for February. And we're going to Jagannath Puri. Yeah. We'll go to Jagannath Puri. And then we'll fly up to Vrindavan. And we'll be in Vrindavan. Then we'll get ready for Gaur Purnima. <laughs> See? It's amazing. And, that, and then also, as far as our daily practice goes, all of us, you, f you find a baseline that you can handle. And you stay in it. Be consistent. Mercy flows to those who practice. Raga dvesha vimukta istu vishaya nindri aishchara natma vasharapati vidayatma prasada marigachati. Krishna is saying in the Gita, if you, if you practice nicely, then the mercy will just flow down to you. And so when you get a baseline, then you can increase it. Find ways to increase it. Find ways to utilize your time, your brain power, to do more hearing and chanting. It's very beneficial to make a goal to read all the Prabhupada's books all the way through. Don't miss any of them. Just try to do them all. Don't dabble, but be very systematic all the way through from, from beginning to end. Okay? Say yes. yes. And... Uh, if you can take the Bhakti Shastri, the Bhakti Vaibhav, and the Bhakti Vedanta, stay in it. You already know how to study hard, all of you students here, and those of you who are already working here in the top point zero one two five percentile of the world for intelligence and academic acumen. So you can just Breeze through Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibhav, Bhakti Vedanta. It keeps you studying the books in, in detail. And then uh, take up some meaningful service that can be your emblem of practice of devotional service where you've got your Vaishnav Academy that you started. The Vedic Academy, and you did it for so many years. It's been a mainstay of our whole community. You'll be known for that forever. I mean, it's already stamped that you you did that, and all the others that did it with you. And then 
Others have taken up service for book distribution and just your name's in the book. You can't take it back, it's too late. Even if you decide to say, no, you're already famous. And everyone's doing that here, taking some kind of service where you can just say, I'm gonna contribute in this way. And every service can be expanded. And it's amazing how it does. If you just try to do the best you can with what you have and be imaginative and try to get expert help and just be connected to it really strongly with devotion. It's a really good way to expand your devotion is to be into your service. Do something that's meaningful for the Sankirtan movement. Take up a, a role that will make a difference and play a part. And your part will grow when you get into it. It starts with whatever little thing you can do now, and then you'll learn as you go, because Prabhupada said, you learn on the job. And he pointed to his heart once, and he said, your master in your heart will show you how to do it. So we have a really, really good life, what we're living here. And it gives us a protection from all the goings on in the material world. We have a way of watering the root, so we don't have to be concerned with so many external details. You do have to work and stuff, right? Say yes. yes. But that's okay. It's because there's a time to work, there's a time to go to school. All throughout that, you keep your prakti going, and there'll be a time when <clears throat> you'll be called upon to just do service all the time and use all your expertise you learned in working and in school and everywhere else. You're listening, right? Okay. Uh, let's share a few realizations as we have to go in a couple minutes. I just found out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we could share microphones would be helpful. So well, this is a reflection from the class that you gave. Um, you were talking about, you know, very basic stuff when we start off with Krishna consciousness, not this body, we're the soul. Um, you know, in India, usually when someone passes away, you don't, at least women don't go to the cremation. Um, this year, I actually saw two of it for the first time. Uh, someone I know and someone was very dear as well. Um, I realized that, wow, you know, I mean, here they actually show you. I know since the kids are here, I don't want to be very gross. But it was just uh, like an uh, oven and then um, fire and they just put it in and then close it. And it's all done in half an hour. They call you, they give you the ashes. I was, <laughs> I was thinking that I've always, keep, I've always kept reading that I'm not this body, I'm the soul, I'm not this body, I'm the soul. But actually when I saw that happen, I was just thinking that, how many times have I thought that I am this body, you know, let it be like what I say has to happen or I need to lord it over the material nature. So everything came very strong. So I was just thinking, you know, when after the whole incident, I was looking at, you know, I'm, this is just, I'm living in this body. <laughs> Someday this is going to turn into the same oven and get into ashes. So how long will I be holding on to me, mine, you know, my importance, so it was huge, um, you know, very difficult to take it <laughs> because so many things you're so attached to and then all of a sudden you saw, you see people just who are sitting around you just pass away, they're not around anymore. <laughs> so it has been pretty eye-opening. <laughs> I just wanted to comment on what you were talking this afternoon. Ram Nam Satya Hai. You want to say? Vayor Amritam Atedam Bashvantam Shariram Om Kratosmara Kritamsmara Kratosmara Kritamsmara Let this temporary body be burnt to ashes and let the air of life be merged with the totality of air. Now, my Lord, please remember all my sacrifices and because you are the ultimate beneficiary, please remember all I have done for you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs>